One of the greatest things in the world is fabrication tools. But what's better than fabrication tools is power fabrication tools. And the only thing better than power fabrication tools is fabricating power fabrication tools. In this episode, we're gonna turn this into this. Hello, garage fabbers. My wife bought me an Eastwood manual shrinker stretcher set for Christmas, two years ago. They've been collecting dust ever since because I haven't had the time to build a stand for them. But recently, I was motivated to find time. This is Wally. You might have seen him on the first two seasons of Pawn Stars. He's also one of my greatest sources of fabrication knowledge. Wally told me about an idea he had to create a pneumatic shrinker stretcher. That's an awesome idea for a couple reasons. One reason would be obvious for anyone that's used one. Operating a manual shrinker stretcher gets tiring after a while and a pneumatic one wouldn't. Not to mention, if you have one like mine, you have to pump the handle by hand and most of us only have one hand left to hold the workpiece. So, a pneumatic unit would keep both hands free. Now, you can connect a manual shrinker stretcher to a stand with a foot-operated pedal. That would be a huge benefit. Not only does that free up your hands, but our legs are stronger and they don't get tired as quickly. But, stands with foot pedals are pretty stinking big, and if you're just joining Garage Fab, our focus here is to show you how to conserve valuable space in your tiny shop. The reason pneumatic power is so brilliant goes beyond just convenience and ease of use. If I use a pneumatic cylinder, I should be able to install an air pressure regulator, which would adjust how much force the cylinder applies to the shrinker stretcher. I could turn the pressure up to move metal quickly, and I could turn the pressure down to make fine adjustments to my workpiece. And best of all, once the regulator is set, each and every bite of the shrinker stretcher will be perfectly consistent, which would make creating large, even bends a snap. If you're using the handle or stomping on a pedal, good luck with consistency when you start to get tired. Let's get to building this thing. Amazingly, all the major parts for this build I got from Amazon. I'll put a link to every item in the description down below. If you use those links, you'll get the same low price I did, but I'll get a tiny commission which could potentially help pay for future videos like this. Thank you in advance. If there's enough interest in this project, I'll consider putting together a kit which would include all the pre-cut metal that you could purchase and assemble yourself. Let me know in the comments below. Here's my Amazon shopping spree. A two inch diameter pneumatic cylinder with a six inch stroke from Parker. A name I've trusted for air suspension valves since my beginning in the mini truck scene in 2007. A pneumatic pedal valve. I bought two actually, you only need one. I'll explain in a second. A small air pressure regulator and a package of hose that came with a little box of fittings which has all the fittings I need and then some. All those parts came in today. I'm so excited, I just gotta skip the metal work for a minute and slap together the pneumatic system to see if it'll work the way I'm hoping it will. So about those pedal valves. First, I ordered this one, which is a simple switching mechanism. When you step on the pedal, it allows air to travel from your compressor to whatever device you have connected to it. When you release the pedal, it cuts the air supply and bleeds off the pressure. So the plan is to use a pneumatic cylinder to pull down the handles of the shrinker stretcher. Now, all I need to do is develop a spring mechanism to pull the piston back up to prepare for the next actuation. Perfect. Well, it was perfect until I found this pedal. This pedal does the exact same thing as the first one, except this is awesome. Are you ready? When you release this pedal, the airflow reverses and pushes the piston the other way. Even perfecter. No need for springs today, my friends. Enough messing around. I wanna take a minute to tell you that this video is brought to you by nobody. Maybe you've noticed ads do not play on this channel. 
Until today, monetizing hasn't even been an option for me. YouTube currently requires creators to have at least 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours in the last 365 days. I'm excited to announce that GarageFab met that requirement today. That said, now that we can officially monetize the channel and start earning income from ads, we're not going to. At this time, GarageFab is all about delivering quality content and building community. Ads can't help with those things, so for now, GarageFab will remain ad-free. We're planning some really expensive projects for 2022, so we won't always be ad-free. But for now, this is my way of showing you my appreciation for spending your valuable time with GarageFab. Thank you all. Back to the project. I usually design stuff in my head, so I don't have a fancy blueprint to show you. But here's the basic plan. There's a left plate and a right plate with enough space between them for the pneumatic cylinder. The way I designed this tool was by situating all the parts on a 12 inch wide piece of cardstock, which would resemble the steel plate I'm using. The only steel plate I have is 12 inches wide. There's a quick space saving tip there. Rather than buying four by eight sheets of steel plate that I can't move around by myself, I buy my steel plate in the form of 12 inch wide flat stock. It comes in 20 foot length, so there's plenty of material and it's rare that I need to make a part that's larger than 12 inches in both directions. The 12 inch flat stock is easy to store and easy-ish to move around by myself. This thing is gonna be symmetrical, so I drew a line down the center of my cardstock. With the parts on the cardstock, I checked the movements of all the parts to make sure they didn't interfere with each other and make sure the shaft of the cylinder would move the handles fully. Since my cylinder only moves six inches, I need to shorten the handles significantly. This will take away some leverage, but the air cylinder will be way stronger than my arms, so that shouldn't be an issue. If I cut the handles down to about six inches long, there will be plenty of cylinder stroke for complete motion. With the shorter handles, I've decided that placing the shrinker stretcher heads seven inches apart will be enough to keep the two handles from colliding. With the cylinder positioned so it can pull the handles down all the way, I can mark where the bottom mount will be, which will just be one of these quick release pins. So I've got the layout all mapped out, so now I just need to make sure there will be enough space between the two side plates for the pneumatic cylinder, which is two inches in diameter. I have some trailer hitch receiver tubing laying around that's two and a half inches. So that'll give me a quarter inch of clearance between the cylinder and the side plates. And if I use this receiver tubing, I could just set this machine on a stand with a two inch square post. That said, since the side plates will be spaced out two and a half inches by this tubing, I'll make the plates the shrinker stretcher heads mount to two and a half inches as well. After I make a mount for the bottom end of the cylinder, we can start cutting some steel plate. The reason I've been drawing all this on cardstock is I can now cut out this design and use it as a template. I can lay this template on some 3 16 inch steel plate and trace out all my cut lines.
I've got all the metal pieces cut out, but before I weld it all together, I wanna do one last thing. I'm going to cut a bunch of holes in the side plates with my Hugen Rotocut hole cutters. There will be about 18 holes total and only one of them has a functional purpose, which is an access to the removable pin at the bottom of the cylinder. All the other holes are just an attempt to make this tool look less like a weekend project and more like an expensive machine from a big name tool company. You'll have to let me know in the comments if you think it worked. Well, all the pieces are made and I was ready to weld everything together. And then I realized I overlooked something. The pivot hole at the bottom of the cylinder is gonna be located right here in the bottom hole of the frame. That will allow the cylinder to pivot on that pin. The problem is the position of this pin is gonna make these air lines stick straight out and they're gonna hit the other plate on the other side. And I didn't realize that. For some reason I was thinking they were gonna be aimed sideways this way and so it wasn't gonna be a big deal. So what I think I'm gonna have to do is cut some additional holes in one of the plates where the lines are. The bottom one, just a small hole because this line doesn't move very much when it pivots. The top one on the other hand moves a lot. So I'm gonna have to create a very large oval hole and really just hope that that doesn't make the entire thing too weak. Here's a quick fab tip. If you're familiar with hole saws, you'll know that they need a small pilot hole in order to keep the hole saw centered. Some hole saws have a drill bit that goes through first. Mine have a pin that needs to be centered in a hole. But what happens if, let's say you need to make a hole larger with a hole saw, you no longer are able to have a pilot hole. Or in my case right now, I need to cut a smaller hole just off this larger hole. And I'm still not gonna be able to use the pilot hole to keep the cutter centered. So what you can do instead, if you cut the hole that you're making in another piece of material and clamp it to your workpiece right where you need to cut the hole, the second piece, will actually keep the whole saw centered and guided and you'll be able to cut just a tiny little chunk right out of there without it wobbling all over the place. I'll show you what I mean right now. I don't know if I wanna consider this a quick tip, but sure, why not? Quick tip, I bought this router six years ago for one wood project, and I have never worked with wood since. But recently I learned that the carbide bits that I buy for this tool have the same size shank as this router. This router is now one of my favorite tools for sculpting metal.
This thing is just about finished. All I need to do is connect the shaft to the cylinder to the handles. But because there's only one cylinder and two handles, I need to be able to quickly switch back and forth between shrinking and stretching. So I bought another one of these quick release pins. So all I have to do is pull the pin, swap the handle, and I should be good to go. I just eyeballed a mark on the handle about where I think I'm going to cut it. It's short enough to not collide with the other handle, gives me plenty of leverage, and I get full motion out of the cylinder. So I'm going to cut these handles, weld on the bushings. <sighs> we should be able to try it out. If you've made it this far without even knowing what a shrinker stretcher does, bless your heart. Here's a stupid fast explanation. Sheet metal shares some properties with a piece of paper. It's flat, you can flex it, and you can fold it into a sharp bend. But metal has an ability that paper does not. Let's say you have a bent piece of material that you want to take on a curved shape like a trailer fender. If you try to flex paper into that curved shape this way, you'll get a buckle in the center because there's too much material. In order to prevent this buckle, you would need to shrink this material here. But unlike metal, paper cannot shrink. Likewise, if you wanted to bend your piece of material the other way, the paper would tear because there's not enough material. Again, unlike metal, paper cannot stretch. That's where the shrinker stretcher comes in. Let's say you want to recreate a section inside a door sill. You might start with a piece kind of like this, and after working it on the shrinker stretcher for a while, you'll end up with something more like this. <laughs> Not even close. Oh well. I did this from memory, and I don't know what I'm doing, but hopefully this gives you an idea of what the machine can do. I said earlier I didn't have a blueprint to build this thing from, but now that it's built, I drew it up for those of you that want to copy this project. There were a few things I didn't like about my build, so I made the changes in the drawing. Feel free to take a screenshot and go to town. Thanks for your time, my friends, and until the next one, keep moving forward.